So, my name's Dane, and I'm an applications engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. So today's webinar is entitled, Which CAD Package Do You Need? And that's a really valid question. So today, everyone's muted by default, but if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box, and someone at Hawkridge will answer it, whether it's me or one of my colleagues on the line as well. And if you are interested in any of the subject matter and would like to see it demonstrated in a way that's maybe more relevant to your industry or line of work, again, please feel free to reach out to your sales rep and we can schedule a personal demonstration that meets your needs. So there's about 17 different topics I'm gonna touch on today and I only have an hour. So that leaves me with about three minutes per topic. So this is kind of gonna be a speed round introduction. So again, if you see a topic that interests you, please contact your Hawkridge system sales rep and they can schedule a personalized demo for you. So SolidWorks has three distinct packages, standard, professional, and premium. So today's goal is to introduce you to the unique tools and features each package offers. The packages are tiered, so everything available inside of SolidWorks Standard is available in the higher level packages. So premium includes some unique features and all the benefits of standard and professional. So all licenses of SolidWorks come with the basic tools listed on this slide. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you're new to 3D CAD, this may seem overwhelming and complicated compared to the 2D design environment. But I assure you it's just as simple and it's much more valuable. So this is because a 3D model provides so much detail that designers and engineers can communicate product information and visualize complex parts and assemblies way more clearly. So since 3D model data can be transferred to analysis and validation tools and even used for CAM, it increases the accuracy of results and saves time by eliminating the need to recreate your data. So for companies that adopt 3D, these capabilities translate into valuable benefits. The main goal is to reduce the time needed to get new products to market. Other objectives include meeting consumer demand for new products, improving product performance, enhancing product quality, and addressing increasingly complex customer requests. So in many cases, companies are driven to 3D just, just to keep up with the competition. Since all licenses of SolidWorks include these features, I'm not gonna speak about most of them because that would not really help my intent of comparing the packages. However, I'm gonna spend a bit of time on two of these points to demonstrate the robust use of the SolidWorks design environment. So the first standard feature I'm gonna talk about is SolidWorks CAM. So SolidWorks CAM lets you quickly program individual milled parts without leaving the 3D CAD environment. You can simulate your tool paths and create custom posts, or Hawkridge Systems has a comprehensive library of posts which are free for you to download. When your CAM and design environment are the same, you can make manufacturing decisions earlier on in the design because of the associativity of the two. Design changes are automatically applied to machining operations and tool paths, giving designers live feedback on the manufacturing process. And in true SolidWorks fashion, it's easy to learn and intuitive to use and removes the need for any rework when design changes happen. Automatic feature recognition removes the drudgery of day-to-day -day programming by quickly extracting features rather than you having to individually click on all the geometry. You have full access to defining rules within SolidWorks CAM to create and build tool paths and operations to your company standards. Tolerance-based machining can be used to read PMI and select the appropriate tooling for you. So if you want to add fourth and fifth axes, turning, volume mill, configurations, or assembly machining, there are higher packages of CAM that you can add to your SOLIDWORKS. CAM standard is included in all licenses of SOLIDWORKS, and this table shows which features are available with which package. So the STD, that <laughs> is uh, standard, and you can see all of the features that come with every license of SOLIDWORKS. The Pro version, SOLIDWORKS CAM Pro, gives you that added feature of volume mill, configurations, assembly machining, fourth and fifth axes. You're milling with your turning and you're turning two axes. So the second standard feature I'm gonna talk about 
is DriveWorks Express. So DriveWorks is a design automation software with an Express package built into SolidWorks. You create a custom form and use that form to drive parameters or properties of your design. This is great if you have a configurable design with a near infinite amount of possibilities. You can create the designs automatically based upon the customer's requirements as you need them. You can use DriveWorks to create SolidWorks part, assembly, and drawing files all based on this newly created configuration. So DriveWorks Express is a great tool with many applications and it comes with every license of SolidWorks. So the next tier above standard is SolidWorks Professional and it comes with the listed features as well as all the functionality of SolidWorks Standard. The biggest highlights in Professional are PDM, Toolbox, and Visualize. But I'm going to spend some time on each of these sections so you can better determine the products you need to be successful in implementing SolidWorks. So as designs become more complex or as additional people become involved in a project, a tool for managing your CAD files becomes important. SOLIDWORKS PDM standard provides CAD file management for individual users and small work groups to manage your product data, control design revisions, and control access to files. SOLIDWORKS PDM standard is a data management solution for smaller work group environments in a single location. So it's included in your SOLIDWORKS professional. SOLIDWORKS PDM eliminates the overhead of managing SOLIDWORKS data on your local and shared network drives. A data vault is powered by Microsoft SQL, and it guarantees all information is securely stored and indexed for fast retrieval by authorized users within your company. It's easy to implement and configure and efficiently guides your product teams through your development process, ensuring that team members have access to the right files at the right time. Integration with SOLIDWORKS provides your organization with a highly productive data management system so then your users can focus on the design, not how they're managing their files, where they're saving them, versions, things like that. So some of the biggest features included inside of PDM is SOLIDWORKS file vaulting. So a secure vault ensures all files are located in the correct location and sets the pathways for newly created files in all file formats. It allows administrators to give certain users specific permissions in all levels of the vault to ensure no accidental user errors occur. PDM includes secure check-in and check-out of files. When a file inside the vault is being edited, it gets checked out and no other users can edit the file at the same time. This ensures that work does not get duplicated or overwritten if local copies are created on different machines and then recopy to a central location, or in this case, our PDM vault. PDM includes the ability to change user and group access rights. Each user can be given unique permissions relevant to their job title. So for example, the marketing team can have access to the solid models in a read-only format so they can begin work and visualize and create some rendered marketing collateral without the fear of accidentally changing the solid model. PDM has automated revision and version control. So anytime you check a file into the vault, a new version of the file is created and the design can be reverted back to that version at any time. At certain stages of the workflow, like before management approval, a new revision of the design can be created and can be recalled. So a complete history of the part is stored, as you see on the screen, and you can revert to any stage of the design at any time. PDM has custom workflows that can be created to standardize company processes and expedite the process when the data needs to change hands. If a certain user needs to finish their work before a different user can start theirs, PDM can notify the appropriate party when the file has reached their section in the workflow. So let's imagine a scenario of a designer and a drafter. The designer cannot create, sorry, the drafter can't create his manufacturing drawings until the designer has completed the model and pushed it to the release state of the workflow. 
when the designer's done the model, he can push the file through the workflow and the drafter will be notified that the model is finalized and the drawings now need to be created. The PDM workflow simplifies and standardizes the process. And if the two are generating multiple files a day, it eliminates the chance of miscommunication. So up next on our list is the toolbox. The SolidWorks toolbox is a vast component library containing over a million standard hardware items. These components can be used as is or can be customized to meet your specific company standards. Hardware items can be easily dragged and drop into your assembly, speeding up your design work and helping complete your bill of materials. Traditionally, designers will pick the parts they need from a specification list. It takes time to look that up, pick the one you want, and then model it. There's no need for this with the SolidWorks toolbox as the appropriate sized hardware will automatically be sized from the feature you're adding it to. So if you're adding a bolt to a hole, all you have to do is pick the head type and SolidWorks will decide the diameter and the length. So with the toolbox, you're gonna save time by not having to thumb through parts catalogs to check values and specs. You're gonna reduce cost by using standard off the shelf components, speed up your design time by not having to draw these off the shelf components, improve your accuracy with automatic sizing based on hole size and length required. And it's a fast and easy tool that add additional fasteners such as washers and nuts. And the toolbox components are searchable within your solid assemblies, making it easier to find them, manipulate them, hide them, show them, whatever you wanna do with them. Next up on the list is the advanced photorealistic rendering capabilities. So SolidWorks Professional comes with two different rendering engines, PhotoView 360 and Visualize, both of which produce photo-like images of your 3D models. The ability to experience the design as it would be in real life helps win more business by providing a more engaging way to present proposals. And it also helps guide critical internal decisions earlier in the design phase without the need for building costly physical prototypes. And it's a faster, more cost-effective way to get feedback and confirmation from potential customers and buyers, ensuring you're making the right product decisions. So rendering's not just for marketing and consumer products. It can really help you take your products and present them in their best light. Whether for design reviews or customer feedback cycles, photorealistic rendering can really increase your appearance in front of your customers while protecting your IP because you don't have to share any manufacturing drawings. So the first rendering option in PhotoView 360, and it's completely contained within the SolidWorks environment. This enables you to quickly and easily create powerful photorealistic images. And it can create animations, which can clearly communicate your design intent. And you don't really need to be a graphics expert to be able to use it. You can create a walkthrough and take your clients on a virtual tour of your design live or with a recorded video. You can demonstrate your design's basic operation by applying motion, gravity, and component contact or by manually moving the components. Then you hit record and save a video. So the, the second rendering option is SolidWorks Visualize. And Visualize is a standalone install that does not occupy a license of SOLIDWORKS. So your marketing team or graphics designer can leverage 3D data without impeding your design team. So SOLIDWORKS Visualize standard features include photo quality imagery at unlimited resolution, advanced multi-layer materials, fading the opacity of parts and models, accurate simulation of real world lighting with HDR support for photorealism without the cumbersome manual lighting techniques, cut planes, integrated connection with a free online community of over a thousand free assets, support for professional texture maps, interactive part splitter for separating surfaces so then you don't have to go back into SolidWorks, preset camera filters to enhance your images and make them really pop off the screen. You can basically recreate any lens type and visualize to get the effect that any professional photographer can. So if that all sounds too complex, 
there's an easy mode to produce visually stunning renders quite quickly. So just like you see in this video demonstration, this is the easy mode, and that's basically where I like to live. But there is a whole advanced mode underneath where the sky's the limit of what you can do. So let's play a game that I like to call render or photograph. I'm going to toggle through some images, and I want you to guess if it's a render or a photograph. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the answer key. So this first image is the inside of an airplane. So notice how the sun's coming through the window. And if you look into the cockpit, it's blurred in the back. So is this a photo or a render? How about this pair of diamond earrings? You can see a lot of refraction going on in the diamonds, a bunch of different colors. What about this beauty care product line? So clearly the back is Photoshopped, but the, the product itself, is that a photograph or a render? This jet engine, it could be a plastic or glass prototype, or it could be a render. And finally, is this a picture of my car or is this a render? So you can look at the wheels. There's some blur where it looks like they're spinning. The background is blurred. The light reflecting off the curves there on the door. So the answer is they were all renders from 3D models. That's really impressive power coming from SolidWorks Visualize. But let's move on to another great feature from SolidWorks Professional. So next up on our list is eDrawings Professional. eDrawings is a lightweight CAD viewer that is free for anyone to download, which makes collaboration easy and cost effective. An eDrawings file is smaller than a SolidWorks file and helps protect your IP if you have sensitive information that you don't want to share. You can even send your CAD models as an executable file that will install eDrawings on any machine, or you can save it as an HTML so it can be opened in any browser, even a mobile one. SolidWorks Professional comes with eDrawings Professional, which has some enhancements over the free version. So markups allow for collaboration and review of a design, and the measurement tool allows users to double check dimensions without needing a 3D CAD program. Enhanced communication can lead to less errors in the manufacturing process and can be extremely valuable in the sale of a new design. So the advanced collaboration tools included in eDrawings Professional are enabling markups, enabling measure. So when you can enable it, you can also disable it. So if you don't want people to have access to that, you can turn it off. If you want them to, you can turn it on. You can password protect the files. You can dynamically cross section. You can move components, explode views, view configurations, and read the mass properties from SolidWorks. So let's imagine a situation where eDrawings would be very effective and useful. So I finished working on a new product design, and I need management approval before I can move on. But I want to start another design while my manager checks the previous one. My manager can open the eDrawings file on another machine without using the SolidWorks license, so I can continue my work while I wait for a reviewed, marked up eDrawings file. After the design is finalized, I need to share it with my client or customer, and I want them to be able to view it easily without the hassle of sending them the whole CAD model. I also need to securely share this with the manufacturing guy I'm working with to make sure the design can be molded and assembled. All of this collaboration is possible with eDrawings because I can control how much of the design they can see and they can view the 3D models without any software license. Better and more proactive communication can lead to fewer misunderstandings between me and my manufacturers, assemblers, and clients. So up next on our list is the costing module. So SolidWorks costing is like an automated spreadsheet built directly into the part environment. So the current process for, let's say, a sheet metal component might take the flat pattern, 
calculate the perimeter, count features, and then have me plug it into a spreadsheet. And it would end up looking something like this. SolidWorks can do all of that and automates it. So it takes a fraction of the time and it updates live as changes are made to help the designer make cost conscious decisions. The pains of costing without SolidWorks and Excel spreadsheet method, like this image on the right, include manual entry, could be inconsistent, it's time consuming, and there is a lot of potential for user error. So SolidWorks automated sheet metal costing can cost material, material, the thickness, um, blank sizing, cut path, break bending, punches, forms, custom operations, maybe like painting, inspection, shipping, heat treating, punches, welding, machine setup costs, ERAP data entry, pretty much anything. It's fully customizable to whatever template you want. So costing can be useful for all levels of the business. So for management and executives, costing can ensure you hit cost targets and maintain healthy profit margins while breaking barriers between manufacturing and design. Because costing uses data provided by manufacturing to create templates to determine the costs. For designers, engineers, and engineering managers, you can design for cost upfront and it eliminates the need to redesign for cost later. Costing enables the designer to make design decisions based on the cost of manufacturing. So it's faster and more repeatable than quotes from external or even internal manufacturing. So for manufacturers, you can guarantee instant quotes much faster than spreadsheets and much more repeatable and accurate than a rule of thumb estimate. You can be dead accurate to the manufacturing data provided in the customizable templates and template data can be calibrated to the actual costs, further improving your quoting accuracy. CircuitWorks is next up. So CircuitWorks lets you create 3D models from the file formats written by most electrical computer aided design systems or ECAD. Electrical and mechanical engineers can collaborate to design printed circuit boards that fit and function in SOLIDWORKS assemblies. So I can take their PCB data, import it into SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS will convert it to 3D geometry, and then I can build my casings around it. So CircuitWorks has both a dedicated user interface and a SOLIDWORKS interface. So CircuitWorks supports industry standard Intermediate data format used by a wide variety of ECAD systems for PCB design. CircuitWorks also supports the PADS ASCII file format from Mentor Graphics, PowerPCB, as well as the ProStep EDMD collaboration format used by Mentor Graphics and Cadence. So CircuitWorks enables you to share, compare, update, and track electrical design data so users can quickly resolve electrical uh, electrical, mechanical, integration, and collaboration problems. So even a step beyond CircuitWorks for even better integration of ECAD and MCAD design, SolidWorks PCB can be integrated into your design suite for designing and testing PCB designs. SolidWorks Professional has a built-in design checker and task scheduler. These are the next features that we're going to talk about. So with the design checker, you can use SolidWorks to establish design standards and then check drawings, parts, or assemblies against them as you design to ensure consistent and complete drawing outputs. With SolidWorks, you can verify designs against company standards, automatically correct non-conforming design and drafting issues, set up and save specific designs and drafting checks, Run the check to validate your document against the standard requirement. Validate the active document against design checks that you can create from existing files. You can retrieve design checks based on attributes from a SOLIDWORKS part, assembly, or drawing. You can check specifically for fonts, dimensions, arrows, units, and other documentation details, 
and you can compare your drawings to past results from reviews of other drawings. So in this example right here, I'm going to check for font, leader size, dimension formatting. And after the check, SolidWorks has automatically changed them to comply to the company standard. So the design checker ensures all documentation leaving your company are correct and uniform. So your suppliers, manufacturers, or clients can come to expect a constant quality that they can then associate to your brand. The SolidWorks task scheduler allows you to schedule processor or time consuming tasks at a later date. Renderings and simulations take time and processing power. So instead of watching the task occur, you can schedule it to happen during downtime, like maybe over lunch or overnight. So the results are ready when you arrive in the morning. If you need to create a drawing package for design review, you can quickly automate the task and be instantly prepared. For a complex assembly, there could be hundreds of drawings with effective use of drawing templates and modeling techniques you can use the task scheduler to automatically generate a drawing package or update an existing one. Doing that manually would take a lot of time because you'd have to open each file, rebuild it, save it, and then finally print it. The task scheduler does all of that for you, but without supervision. Reverse engineering can be a daunting task, but SolidWorks Professional has some convenient tools to help. So scan to 3D, allows the import of point cloud and mesh files generated from a scanning device. With the help of automated tools, SolidWorks can take scan data and generate surfaces and bodies to capture design intent quickly and easily and convert the information into SolidWorks geometry. After importing, you can always work with files in their native mesh formatting with the new mesh body type. So you might be asking yourself, well, why do we care about mesh models? Well, they're the primary output of 3D scanners, like our great line of Artec 3D scanners, but they're also the input 3D printers expect, such as HP and Mark Forge 3D printers. And because of this, mesh models are increasing in popularity to the point where there are even file sharing sites dedicated to them, like TurboSquid and Thingverse. So there's two ways that scan to 3D helps you reverse engineer with scan data. The first approach is to convert the STL tessellations to solid geometry so SolidWorks can manipulate it natively with the full suite of tools. This is great for creating manufacturing drawings, cam tooling, molds, or casts of the part, but if you want to export back to a 3D printer, a different approach might be more efficient. So SolidWorks has a suite of tools for editing mesh bodies, like an STL file you'd receive from a scanner without having to convert it. This is a fast and effective way to work with scan data, but it comes with a limited tool set. So on mesh bodies, you can use Boolean operations. You can hollow, trim, extend, and split to manipulate the scans. You can also combine mesh bodies and regular SolidWorks bodies in one file to achieve your reverse engineering tasks with ease. This list is constantly being updated in every major release, so the tool becomes even more powerful year after year. And finally, to finish off the capabilities of SolidWorks Pro, we're gonna talk about tall analysis. So we typically think of design validation as simulation, but it's just as important to verify the physical fitment of your parts by performing a tolerance stack up analysis to ensure that they will actually fit together. Every component has a manufacturable tolerance. And when you're trying to fit multiple components together, that range can be very important. If your tolerances are too broad, you can end up with assemblies that don't fit together but all the parts are meeting the manufacturing specifications. The DIM expert tool is used to tolerance all the part files and can be done automatically following standards that you can preset inside of document templates. At the assembly level, 
The tolerance analysis tool will give you a summary of the nominal value, potential min, max, and some statistical values like the RSS min and max. You can see the biggest contributors to the range and edit any of the part tolerances from this window until you meet the desired fitment. The results can be exported into Excel in a report format for documentation and presentation of this information. So that was everything for SolidWorks Professional. SolidWorks Premium is a comprehensive 3D design solution that adds the capabilities of SolidWorks Professional with powerful simulation, motion design validation tools, advanced wire and pipe routing functionality, and more. So users can test product performance against real life motion and forces with our rich simulation capabilities, efficiently and easily designed pipe, wire, or duct routes in 3D, the ability to flatten non-analytical surfaces, costing for assemblies, and environmental life cycle analysis. So let's break down some of these premium features. SolidWorks Premium gives product engineers an intuitive virtual testing environment for static linear simulation. So they can answer common engineering challenges with this SolidWorks embedded solution. Built on a concurrent engineering approach, SolidWorks simulation helps engineers know if their product will perform properly and how long it will last. This simulation package is designed for the designer and does not require any analytical background to learn and use effectively. So the assumptions made during a linear static simulation are that the material is linear and deformations will be happening in the elastic range. The deformations are small and the material has a constant stiffness. And finally, all of the loading is going to be static and not changing. SolidWorks simulation has many post-processing options like the von Mises stress, which is used in most failure criteria. But since this assembly is multiple materials with different yield strengths, the factor of safety plot will give me better insight into this design. I wanna design for a minimum factor of safety of two, so I need to make some changes. Switching back to the model and changing some dimensions can be done seamlessly. And updating my results can be done with the click of a button. So my design now meets my design criteria, and I've saved myself some potential headaches in the future with having to create physical prototypes and then breaking those physical prototypes. So I can get a couple revisions out of the way in the virtual world. When looking to optimize your models, the design insight tool can be used to create a plot that shows the regions of the model that carry the loads most effectively. Some users may recognize this plot as a load path plot. You can use this information to reduce the model's material by removing it in areas that do not carry any of the load or act as a connection point. This is a great way for a designer to optimize a model without being a simulation expert. A design study can be used to run consecutive simulations while changing one or more variables in each run. For this example, we're gonna change the thickness of the arm and radius of the fillet to better understand how they affect the structural integrity of the design. The results are listed in a table format and the constraint of a minimum factor of safety is two is used to filter out the bad designs. Clicking on a study will update the graphics area so you can interrogate the new geometry and simulation results. All the red columns do not meet the design criteria and all the gray columns do. This tool is effective for understanding how certain features affect your simulation results. So now that we're done with the finite element simulation, we're gonna move on to a kinematic motion analysis. SolidWorks Motion easily evaluates how your product will perform and move throughout its operational cycle. You can visualize your product moving as it would in the real world and measure the forces and loads on your design. The data can be used to correctly size motors and create the correct mechanism to ensure product performance, quality, and safety. So SolidWorks Motion 
uses the assembly mates along with part contacts and a robust physics-based solver to accurately determine the physical movements of an assembly under load. With the assembly motion and forces calculated, a structural analysis of the components can be performed to ensure product performance using the finite element method that we just looked at earlier. So there's two types of motion analysis, kinematic and dynamic. So kinen kinen <laughs> kinematic analysis studies how your design moves due to forces and motion applied to the assembly. The key results of interest are the assembly's range of motion and determining the part displacements, velocities, and accelerations. Dynamic motion analysis evaluates the forces generated by the movement as well as the movement itself. So when working with designs containing moving parts, it's important to check how the design will function before you make it so you can avoid some costly mistakes. SolidWorks Motion provides the ability to not only move your mechanism, but also obtain performance information at the same time. You can apply motors, springs, dampers, forces, contacts, gravity, and then plot the results after running the test. The defining motors or actuators are the input, and you can control them with constant speed, distance, maybe oscillating. So along with the motion input, SolidWorks Motion uses the assembly mates to determine the resulting motion of the model. All you need to do is set the end time and you're ready to check out the operation of your design. After the motion simulated, the results can be displayed as plots or vectors on the screen, making it easy to relate the values to specific model positions. And since everything's parametric, you can go back and edit it at any time, which is pretty simple. So you can add additional forces to account maybe for the patient's loading, something like that, and rerunning the study will update those results automatically. So that was SolidWorks Motion. Now let's look at the routing package included in SolidWorks Premium. SolidWorks routing accelerates the development process and saves time by designing piping and tubing in 3D during the system design. So the design process is simple and only requires a skeleton frame sketch. SolidWorks will then choose all the necessary components and joints from a vast library based upon your predefined templates. So by integrating piping and tubing during the design process, Designers can help ensure efficient assembly, operation, and serviceability, avoiding rework delays and extra cost. So piping and tubing use a wide range of tools in SolidWorks Premium to simplify your design and documentation of piping and tubing for a wide range of systems and applications. So maybe machinery, skid systems, or process plant piping. So with SolidWorks Premium, you can create pipe and system designs with butt welded, socket welded, threaded, or other connections. You can have flexible or rigid lines. You can automate the placement of supports and hangers for these lines. You can generate bend tables, tube routes to support manufacturing. It'll automatically calculate cut lengths for all of your pipe and tube runs. You can auto route your pipe and tube runs between a couple points. You can ensure minimum bend radius. You can output your files to piping software, or you can export your piping routes to bend tables or to CNC benders. And you can automatically create piping spool drawings as well. So not only does routing work for piping and tubing, but it also works in the electrical environment. So the routing package can quickly design and route electrical wiring, harnessing, cabling, and conduit assemblies in three dimensions. So integrating these systems during product design, rather than adding them later, accelerates your development process, saves time and rework, and helps to ensure efficient product assembly and serviceability. So routing creates a special type of subassembly 
that builds a path of these electrical cables and components. And the routes can include electrical wiring enclosures, fabricated cable, salted copper, PVC, flexible tubing, welded piping, and associated fittings. So finally, if those aren't in your wheelhouse, SolidWorks routing can route rectangular and round sections to meet different design needs. So if you're doing cable trays or ducting or ribbon cable. So equipment designers, product designers, machine designers, facility designers, and others all need rectangular section routing to complete their designs. So if you can't find something in the library, you can always create it and use the routing environment to create all your routes. So the next premium feature to be introduced is the advanced surface flattening capabilities of SolidWorks. Often products like leather goods, sports equipment, footwear, or products made from composite materials like carbon fiber and fiberglass have complex shapes but they're manufactured from materials that start out as flat stock, like your cowhide, nylon, cloth, or flat composite sheets. Therefore, it's necessary to accurately determine or estimate the size and shape of the surfaces in their flattened state in order to be able to cut the material from a flat sheet. SolidWorks has always provided the ability to automatically flatten certain types of geometry using the SolidWorks flat pattern feature for sheet metal parts. So sheet metal provides automated flattening using either a sheet metal K-factor or bend tables, and it's included in every license of SolidWorks. However, when the geometry is more complex, such as with non-analytical surfaces, more control is often required to determine how the surface should be flattened. SolidWorks advanced surface flattening functionality provides control and flexibility to easily flatten these more complex surfaces. You can automatically flatten the surface and integrate and in, ugh. you can automatically flatten the surface and interrogate an interactive deformation plot to graphically view stretch and compression concentrations that can occur when flattening some surfaces with high curvature. You can relieve material stresses due to flattening by creating relief cuts. Relief can be created by selecting sketches, sketch entities, part edges, or by splitting the part. You can select control edges to guide the flattening process to maintain length and shape of specific edges, which is particularly helpful for more highly contoured surfaces. If you sketched curves on the surface and then flatten the surface, those sketch curves will also get flattened. And finally, you can export the flattened surface outlines and patterns for material cutting in a variety of export formats. So now that I've mentioned the surface flattening, let's move on to the assembly level costing roll-up feature included in SolidWorks Premium. So the assembly roll-up capability streamlines the process of totaling the costs of your calculated parts, your purchased parts, your hardware, and maybe some custom operations like assembling, painting, packing, whatever you wanna put in there. So there are four types of cost estimations. There's to be calculated, saved cost, purchased cost, and then finally your toolbox parts. So for the to be calculated parts, the cost is calculated if the part does not have a cost value assigned. So costs will be recalculated if you manually choose this option for a part with a saved or purchased cost. Saved cost parts have a cost value that was calculated in the part file, like we saw with that professional feature. Purchased cost parts will assign a cost automatically if you have set a custom property or cost in the template. You can manually override this cost and it's saved at the assembly level. So if you're using a part in multiple assemblies and you just wanna change it in assembly A, you can do that without affecting assembly B, C, D, and so on and so forth. Pretty cool. You can also choose to include or exclude toolbox components. So that professional feature that automatically throws that hardware in there, 
you can assign a value to them all. And then SolidWorks will calculate all that value. Or you can tell SolidWorks to ignore the value of the toolbox components, however you want to do it. So it's a nice way to add up the sum of all the parts. And to finish off today's webinar, we're going to talk about SolidWorks sustainability. SolidWorks sustainability provides a screening level life cycle assessment of the environmental impacts of your full design with seamless integration during your design process. It includes a diverse tool of sustainability express with the capability to assess both parts and assemblies using parameters such as transportation mode and distance, assembly energy, use phase energy consumption, and there's some flexible inputs such as recycled content level, end of life scenarios, and you can enable more detailed assessments as well. You can even perform time dependent environmental comparisons using varying lifetimes of different design solutions. And with that, I thank you for watching today's presentation. I know I briefly covered a lot of topics. So if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us at any time or type your questions in the chat box and I will try to get to them in the order that I received them. All right, where can I get more information on the routing was my question. So what you can do is you can give us an email right there at info and one of our sales reps can give you a call and then they can set up a time for one of the engineers like me to, uh, to talk to you, see what industry you're in, and we can answer any questions you have there, and even give you a live technical demonstration on how the software works step by step. So on the screen right now, you can either call one of the numbers, depending on which country you're in, send us an email, go to our website, lots of ways to get a hold of us, and they will be uh, to happy to help you there. If there's a specific technical question, like a one-off one, um, yeah, you can type it in there and I'll try and answer it as best I can. So SolidWorks CAM is included in every single version of SolidWorks. So CAM standard is included in every version of SolidWorks. So SolidWorks standard, SolidWorks Pro, SolidWorks Premium, all of those have CAM standard. And what CAM standard can do is your two and a half axes milling, or two and a half axes, yes, milling. Um, what it can't do is turning and lathes or four and fifth axes. That you would have to upgrade to SolidWorks CAM Pro, which can be added on to any version of SolidWorks. So all, everything with an X under the standard that you see on the screen, that's included in every version of SolidWorks. Everything with an X by the Pro, you have to buy an additional add-in that can be added on to any version of SolidWorks. I, again, thank you guys for attending. I hope uh, you learned something with my blast of information I gave you guys. But again, reach out to us and we can definitely custom tailor a demonstration more tuned to your specific industry and needs. But again, have a great day and uh, good luck with your implementation and or use of SOLIDWORKS.